The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you're from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you're from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be welling and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourself cast out and the people will come from east and the west, from the north and the south and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first and some are first who will be last. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, today I want to share with you first from this gospel that we just now heard. In this gospel, Jesus says in the very beginning of it, this is Luke chapter 13, he says, Lord, will only a few people be saved? Someone asked him that. Lord, will only a few people be saved? And he answers them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. So God's equating that there needs to be some certain level of strength that we achieve in order to enter through the narrow gate, in order to enter into heaven, that we have to be strong enough to enter into heaven. So what is, <coughs> excuse me, what is he talking about? The Lord's talking about we must be strong enough in love to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, I want to think, many of us have been watching the Olympics, right? And on the Olympics, what we see is, you know, on the, on the world stage, we watch the television and we see the glory of these uh, athletes. But what we don't see is the grind, the day-to-day -day grind for the last, I don't know how many years, where these athletes have been working day and night to become the athletes they are today. So we watch it on television. You know, they weren't born that way. They had to work hard at that. So they had to exercise their, their physical bodies. They had to eat right. They had to get up. They had to train to become the gold medal or medal athletes that they want to be. And so Jesus says, we must strive. So how many of us are striving? You know, I want you to think of your baptism as the beginning of your training in this life so that you might be able to attain eternal life. And so when you're baptized, you agree to allow God to be your coach, to train you, to be your trainer. And so God is going to discipline you. And that's what we heard in our uh, second reading today. It says here in Hebrews chapter 12, listen, have, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when he reproves you or corrects you. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. Then listen, at the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Or you could say it brings about the gold medal. To those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight the paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed but healed. God wants to bring us to perfection. Be perfect, Matthew 5, 48. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So God wants to strengthen our love capacity. He wants to expand our hearts, our ability to uh, uh, grow in perfection, in holy charity. 
You know, this is what the great athletes of the kingdom of God have done. Look at the hall of fame of heaven. All of these saints, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Andrew, St. James, John, Thomas, Philip, Bartholomew. Look at St. Faustina, Mary Magdalene. They didn't all start out as gold medalists. They trained. And how many times do these gold medalists fall on their faces as they grow in their ability to become the athletes that they are? They don't become a gold medalist by slacking, sitting on the couch, eating potato chips, cookies, and pizza, and beer, and not getting up and disciplining their lives. They become gold medalists by the grind of every day. So there's no glory unless there's a grind. So are you letting Christ train you in the ways of the gospel? And I want you to think of some practical ways to do that. I want you to pay attention to your thought life. What are you thinking each day? What's going through your mind? Is it leading you to become a gold medalist, a hall of famer for God? What are you speaking? And why do you say what you say? The words that we speak have tremendous power. You think of that small little muscle, our tongues. Our tongue, our, our mouth has the power to change a life or destroy a life. Our tongue has the power to defend Christ in the truth or to mock him. Our tongue has the power to bless and to curse. Our tongue has the power to pray or not. Our tongue has the power to gossip or to be grateful. So I want you to think about what do you do with your mouth, your tongue every day? How do you speak to your spouse? Are you speaking life into her or him? Are you building them up? How do you speak to your kids? How do you speak to your coworkers, family members, friends? How do you speak to a stranger? So how's God exercising your ability to build up the kingdom through your mouth, through your tongue, through your mind, your thought life. Remember, what we say goes first through our minds. You don't have to say what you're thinking unless you choose to say it. So your will chooses what you're going to say. But the mind is a powerful tool. So we got to hold every thought captive to Christ. Because if we don't submit and give lordship over all our thoughts, if we don't give Christ lordship over all our thoughts, then we're going to end up saying things that we regret and things that we can't take back. I don't know if you ever heard the story of the you know, person who gossiped. The, the priest said, go up on the mountain, rip a pillow open, and the feathers are just blown everywhere. And then he says, now go and pick up all the feathers. It's literally almost impossible. So once we speak a word, it's done. So be discerning. Be a discerning son or daughter of God as you speak words, as you think thoughts. And as you choose actions, at the beginning of every Mass, we ask God to forgive us for any unholy thoughts, words, or actions in any way we've not allowed Him to train us. Because see, God don't send anyone to heaven or to hell. If we go to heaven, it's because we chose heaven. It's because we have allowed Christ to forgive us, we received confession, we prayed, we read the scripture, we entered into the training. We weren't just flicking channels on the couch with a bag of potato chips. We are entering into the battle of everyday spiritual warfare. It is a war to die to sometimes, to die to what I want to say. Sometimes we want to say things that we know aren't of God. And we have to crucify those things, put them to death. And that takes strength. So the Lord's saying, listen, Lord, will only a few be saved? And he answered, strive to enter through the narrow gates. Strive. Train. Work out. Allow the Lord to lead you. Put prayer in God first. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, many, he says many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but won't be strong enough. You know why they're not strong enough to enter through that narrow gate? That narrow gate is perfect love. It's God's love. You know why they're not, we cannot be strong enough to enter through the narrow gate? It's because we didn't enter into training camp. We didn't enter into the process of becoming an Olympian for the kingdom of God. St. Paul said, run so as to win, not a fading crown, but a crown of glory. And St. Irenaeus says that the glory of God is man fully alive. The glory of God is man fully alive. Are you fully alive? You know, we come to mass, we come to pray. But listen, if you're going to walk out of here and you're not going to 
put into practice what the word of God says, then I would ask, why are you here? And maybe you don't know why you're here, but you're here maybe because you're just a religious, you know, in a religious habit of coming to mass. But I believe deep inside everybody's heart here that we want more. We want more. We want more than just status quo. I want more to mediocrity. I don't want to satisfy or be satisfied with just simply going through the motions. This world don't need more followers. This world needs more leaders. But if you don't have the attitude of an athlete for the kingdom of God, if you don't have the attitude of, Lord, I want you to train me. I want to be a saint. I want to be a hall of famer. I want to be a gold medalist. I'm not going to settle for less. And if you have that attitude and you put faith in the Lord, he'll make you a saint. He'll make you a saint. Do you think, think about this. Do you think Mother Teresa thought one day we would be, you know, her picture would be hanging in St. Peter's Square and there'd be almost nearly a million people celebrating her canonization? Or Padre Pio, for that matter, St. Francis or Claire, Faustina, Mary Magdalene, Peter, Paul, you know, Gianna, St. Gianna, uh, uh, all of these saints, St. Gerald, St. Robert, St. Jane. Do you think all these saints thought one day they would be canonized no but they trained in the moment that they were given in the next moment they were given in the next moment they were given in the next moment they were given they didn't give up so we have to think about this you don't get your jersey unless you make the team and in the end you make the team or you don't. There's no middle ground. You either make the team or you don't. You get a jersey or you don't. And so do you want your jersey? God has a jersey for everyone in this church. He has a jersey ready for you so that when you graduate, if you will, from this earthly training camp into the kingdom, into glory, you'll get your jersey with your name on it and your number. Everyone has it. He has a place for you in his heavenly kingdom. He, he made a place just for you and so God's inviting us to this mass to enter into the warfare. We need food from heaven. We need strength for our souls so that we can enter into the battle of everyday life, of controlling that tongue, controlling our thought life, and leading and guiding and submitting all our thoughts to the captivity of Christ. And then we need strength to choose to love our spouse, family, friends. So what are you watching on television? Or what aren't you watching? What are you listening to on the radio? What aren't you listening to? How do you dress? It affects everything. How you speak, how you don't speak. What you listen to, what you don't. What you hear, what you don't hear. What kind of music you listen to, what kind of music you don't listen to. What you read and what you don't read. It affects everything. So God is calling you and I to let go of the status quo and enter into the royal battle. And we must deny the flesh the world, and the devil. The world simply will lead us into becoming enemies of the cross where we become very selfish-minded and we do not like discipline. Listen, my son, do not disdain discipline of the Lord or lose heart when he reproves you or corrects you. Endure your trials as discipline. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight the path of the Lord. That what is lame may not be disjointed but healed. Meaning, we're weak. We can be lame and disjointed from Christ. But God will heal you if you come to Him. Come to me, you who are heavy burdened and laboring. And I, I the Lord, will give you rest. Receive this Eucharist as if it's your first and your last. And you know, sometimes I think when we're at Mass... We forget that it matters that you're here. You know, you are a part of saving the world and it offertory when you, you have to fully consciously actively participate in putting on this altar of Jesus Christ, the great high priest. You church put on the altar your boredom, your depression, your anxiety, your marriage problems, your struggles at work, your impatience, your fear, your pain, your anger, your hurt, your abuse, your ups, your downs, your joys, your sorrows. What are you going through right now? Put it on the altar because if you give it to the Lord, you will receive the blessings 
of participating in the sacrifice of Christ. You suffer boredom. We'll put it on the altar because that's an altar of sacrifice. You suffer. And God is calling you, calling you to enter into this mystery of faith. You're going to hear me say in a moment, the mystery of faith. What is that mystery of faith? That God takes your humanity, joins it to his divinity, and offers you with him, in him, and through him to the Father, to the glory of God the Father, Son, and Spirit. The angels are here. The saints are here. This is the playing field. And you've been called and invited here. Now to close, I want you to listen to this final parts of this gospel. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, meaning training camp's over, then will you stand outside knocking on the door saying, Lord, open the door for us. Meaning, can I have my jersey? Let me on the team. Let me on the team. And he's going to say in reply, I don't know where you're from. And you'll say, we ate with you in your company. We taught in your, and you taught in our streets. He'll say, I don't know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. Meaning, you who didn't let me train you, you who didn't participate in good. And evil is a lack of participation in the good. The Lord is good. He wants to train us, lead us, guide us in our tongue, in our thoughts, in our actions. He wants to make us saints. But we sat on the couch, watched TV all day, or just sat there and, and clicked on the clicker and ate our potato chips and hamburgers and pizza and whatever it be. And we didn't go and take time for prayer. We'd rather watch TV than pray. We got to put that stuff to death and we got to enter into the process of becoming a saint. And you can just kind of walk out of here and go back to your status quo or you can take what I'm saying and hear what the Lord's trying to say to you and enter into the training that he has for you. Listen, I can't walk onto, I'm from Pittsburgh, I can't walk onto the uh, Steelers training camp and just be like, hey, give me my jersey. They're like, who are you? Where are you from? Get off the field. They'll have me escorted out with security. Because they don't know who I am. You don't just show up and get into heaven. God has shown up and he's inviting you to show up every day to practice. And so maybe you can come to Mass more. Maybe you need to make a better confession or take time to prepare for Mass and confession. Maybe pray a decade or two or three of the rosary every day. The Chaplet of Mercy. Open your Bibles. Read a, a chapter of the gospel each day. Little by little, the Olympian becomes a gold medalist. They don't happen overnight. It's one step at a time. So my brothers and sisters, as we continue the Mass, I ask you to pray for me and I'll pray for you. Because this world, as we know it, is passing away. And let us not run for a fading crown that this world can offer. But let's run for the gold of eternal glory. And may the Lord bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.